गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम विच एवर लोकेशन यू आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो आई एम सो ग्लैड टू अनाउंस द कंप्लीट शी शार्प ए एस पी डॉट नेट माइक्रो सर्विसेस आर्किटेक्चर ट्रेनिंग ऑन क्वेस्पॉन्ड फॉर लास्ट ऑलमोस्ट टू मंथ्स टू एंड हाफ मंथ्स वी वे डूइंग दिस ट्रेनिंग विथ आवर मेम्बर्स आउट देयर एंड नाउ दिस ट्रेनिंग इज कंप्लीटली लाइव ऑन क्वेस्पॉन्ड आई वुड सजेस्ट इवन इफ यू हैव नॉट अटेंडेड माई लाइव ट्रेनिंग please go and see the videos at least you will get a very good idea that how to make a serious asp.net microservice training right you will understand the thought process right and uh, this training is not only live inside questpond but it is also live on our youtube membership right so just in case if you are a youtube member uh, you have taken the youtube member it is also live out there only difference is that in youtube membership we don't provide support so let us say that if you want to talk to me if you want to speak to me then that we can't provide the support out there because it comes from youtube but if you are the member on questpond definitely you you have the chance to meet with me you have the chance to meet with my team members you have the chance to do uh, uh, to do mock interviews right to check out your resumes and so on right but let me tell you that what has happened in this training let me walk you through the syllabus again i have already walked the syllabus some months back but now the the syllabus has been refined retuned and uh, i have made it more fine grained so let us go through that what kind of things have been completed right and what this video will also tell you is that you take my course you don't take my course is other thing right it will tell you that when you are looking at a microservice training how the syllabus should be what are the things you should learn right you will get a good idea so let us get started so here is a complete syllabus i am flashing on the screen please do have a look at it right so in this uh, we were planning a microservice training with a project so in other words this was something the idea we will have one customer order system and uh, there will be an api gateway so the end client which can be react or the end user or angular right whatever right will first hit the api gateway and from there depending on the situation he will go to customer order system or he will go to delivery management system right and because it's a microservices you will have individual projects out here and the communication will happen through the queues this this was the goal right this was the project what we thought about and you can see that this is that complete project we'll talk about it right so um, and this system you know what this complete training we planned by using c sharp asp.net sql server as a backend entity framework as the orm rabbit mq as the queue in between right ocelot as the api gateway api m gateway azure for security purpose and console for health check and poly you know for uh, for the retry patterns and so on right so if you want to retry if something has failed out there you want to keep retrying it or you want to have a circuit breaker pattern those for them we are using poly right so that was the technology stack or the technology components by which we planned this training right so what did we do right so in this training if you see the first thing what you do out here is that domain driven development now why domain driven development you know because in when you look at domain driven development what it does is the thought itself starts by dividing your project into sub domains like if you look at the syllabus we have we talked about core domain we talked about supporting domain we talked about generic domain so do, microservices when you look right what exactly are they they are nothing but they are isolated applications right isolated but working together to create a a bigger entity right so individual source code and individual deployment and individual database and team members also work very focused on every domain right so because you know domain driven development gives this classification of domains and sub domains right it is one of the best way to do microservices or to approach microservices right so if you look at it you know what we did is over here we said that okay what is ddd right and uh, in case of and and remember uh, ddd has two parts one is the strategic ddd where there is planning phase and the another one is a tactical ddd where we talk about the coding phase or we talked about the execution phase now in the in the strategic ddd right the first answer what you should try to get is that why do you need microservice and that's what this strategic ddd helps you to answer right so you can look at it in strategic ddd we talked about microservices we looked into this vocabulary of domain we looked into domain versus classes versus objects we looked into what are these two sections strategic ddd which is the planning phase and tactical ddd which is which is the uh, what do you call the implementation phase then we talked about the different classification domain core domain supporting domain generic domain bounded context context map 
how will the two team, team members or two application what is the strategy of communication right so we looked into this nine context map patterns right and then we started with tactical ddd so in tactical ddd you know we actually started creating the classes so we said that there are three kinds of classes entity class and value objects and service objects right so remember we have we also have the source code this source code has been uploaded so remember now this is an entity class customer order supplier value objects you know where the comparison is is based on the base of value rather than on the base of the reference right uh, and then we, when we talk about services right services are nothing but the infrastructure layer right so we talked about these uh, different kind of classes out here right and uh, then also we went very in detail you know talking about uh, because when you say that you want to create an entity or when you want to create a value object some concepts you know like equals versus equals versus get hash code immutability you know um, you know why structures are not good because structures can also become value objects right and we talked about that love triangle you know that equals and equals and get hash code all of the three have to go in sync right and then we talked about aggregate root that aggregate root look at the code out here so that you can understand so we talked about aggregate root you know where we said so like this one this customer is an aggregate root you know wherein uh, we said that whenever you are adding a customer right that is you know some kind of a logic and second the customer is the main object inside it the addresses the phones the orders everything has to go through the customer right so that's what exactly is the aggregate root and when you talk about aggregate root you have to implement iterator pattern and and we said that the the ddd has to you know when you talk about ddd right when you start with entities you will see that the design patterns are coming automatically like iterator pattern then we will suddenly see there is a factory but remember uh, this factory in ddd is different from the factory in gang of four and then after that we started with cqrs i feel that when you're talking about microservices cqrs is like a compulsion you know why because cqrs helps you to segregate the transactions and by segregating the transactions then you can very nicely apply it to different microservices right so we talked about cqrs we talked about the consistency right we talked about events and aggregates. So one complete chapter I have given to CQRS, command query responsibility segregation. Remember, whenever you are seeing the source code, right? Whenever you are seeing the source code, what I have done is that I have actually, uh, so actually kept, you know, different folders out here. So if you look at CQRS, so CQRS is more of an infrastructure layer, right? So CQRS, you will find it uh, in the applications actually right with the application you can see this is command right it is query so there are query classes right update classes command classes right so we looked into cqrs then we looked into event sourcing if you're talking about creating a full chronological audit trail right then event sourcing that again we had looked into remember when we created the project there are two kinds of database one is a customer database which has all that customer database and uh, it will have all the tables you know which are related to orders and so on and there is an audit trail now this audit trail is nothing but the event sourcing so through event sourcing every time something happens out there we are pushing it to that uh, audit trail out there and then we talked about that how in ddd when you're going with ddd when you're going with cqrs what are the problems with entity framework so one complete chapter i talked about nuts and bolts of persisting this ddd object into entity framework right and you can see there are so many things i've discussed out here and one more important thing is that when you are actually creating the project right you should understand two three different architectures which are very suitable for microservices one is a clean architecture one is a hexagonal architecture and one is an onion architecture right so the clean architecture is more action oriented more use case oriented while while onion architecture is more domain centric right so all that we discussed chapter 22 completely developed uh, completely dedicated i'm sorry uh, to the different type of architecture and if you look at the project right if you look at the project out here this is the project structure and uh, this project structure, structure uh, is actually follows the clean architecture look at it application folder domain folder dto folder infrastructure folder ui folder and so on right and then we looked into queues N no microservice lecture can be completed without queues right so over here we looked at the rabbit mq we saw how to install it we looked into the different patterns of rabbit mq direct pattern versus fan out and so on right and we saw some some examples remember all of these uh, source code has been published out here so for example uh, if you look at rabbit mq there is a source code for rabbit mq right 
so that you can understand this and again when I'm doing the project right inside the project I've implemented RabbitMQ so if you want to learn RabbitMQ you can go through this learn, learn RabbitMQ project but if you say no 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 I want to see the actual implementation then you have to go through this application and then after that we discussed about resiliency pattern like you know if you want to do a retry if you want to do a circuit breaker and so on again that is source code for the same we also talked about API gateway if you have multiple microservices then you would like to put some common things like common authentication authorization like open ID OAuth right or you want to put throttling then you can use an API gateway we looked into different authentication and authorization which is again very important right open ID OAuth open ID connect and so on right and the last two lectures were focused on health monitoring and service discovery by console and we'll also looked into transactions right so this is a complete complete uh, architecture course you know which uh, is now live it is live both inside also and it is also live on Questpond, right if you want to go and see the first one or two hours of video it is down below right but i would suggest that uh, go and watch the video it is already live out there second remember this training is going on still right so you can still join the training and i will be doing a revision remember already 18 20 hours have been completed you can still see from the recordings but i will be doing a revision in the coming one or two weeks so with that you can understand that how you can go through these videos right so if you are thinking about microservices using c sharp using asp.net using ocelot using azure using the best practices like poly right and so on cqrs and so on then this project you should definitely look into this course you should definitely look into right so happy learning happy job hunting